So yeah. this meeting is now being recorded and it will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel probably within a week. Um, so everything you say and do is now recorded for posterity. And thank you, Matt. Sorry to interrupt. No, no worries. We're very grateful that you're able to step in and um, help facilitate at the uh, last minute. Um, okay, so this is the, um, the script that we read before virtual meetings. Uh, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting is conducted via remote means. Um, members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom. Um, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort is made to ensure the public can access the proceedings in real time uh, over Zoom. Um, and then subsequent to this meeting, as Angela just said, we'll upload the um, recording to the town's YouTube channel and, and folks can watch there. And anybody who is um, having trouble getting a hold of us can always email uh, email the co-chairs or the um, the town liaison. So, hey, Cole. So, so we'll go around and do the little roll call and make sure everybody's got good audio. Um, I'll just kind of go across the screen. Uh, Robin. Yes, I can hear. Arthur. Yes. Julian. Yes. Jenny. Yes, I'm here. Joy. Yeah. And Cole. Yep. All right. Great. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna if I can share my screen. I, I was gonna put the um, the agenda up, and then we had we do have a couple of things, a couple of pieces of new business that. Um, well, I'm not sure if I can do this actually. Well, I'll just say it out loud. So we, we do have a couple of pieces of new business. So one, um, Angela has has been so kind as to join us and have uh, help us facilitate a little conversation about you know where things are headed with the council. Um, and then I know Robin has at least one, maybe two uh, things that have come up recently that we wanna speak to as well. Um, so other than those, those items though, we'll, we'll kind of go through the agenda that was posted uh, before. And so um, I guess I would just start with minutes. Uh, did anybody wanna have any discussion about the minutes or or otherwise make a motion to approve? Doesn't look like the minutes record me being there, but I I was there and I, I seconded a motion in them. <laughs> okay, we will revise that. And I apologize, as you all know, um, I wound up trying to both chair and take minutes. So there probably are some other deficits in there too. In the absence of anything else, I'll, I'll motion to accept the minutes. Second that. Okay, great. Um, I guess we would do a quick little roll call vote. So, um, Robin? Yes. Uh, Julianne? Yes. Joy? Oh, Joy, can you hear me? Oh, I said yes. Oh, <laughs> sorry, my bad. Uh, and I'm also a yes. So we are unanimous on the minutes um, uh, with, with oh. an important um, revision. OK. Um, the next item is uh, the Yusufa, um, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. There's a, there was a reimbursement request that came through. Um, and I think I'll let Robin kind of lay out the, the issue, but I, I think we want to, yeah, I think we want the whole council to sort of do, talk about what, what's going on. Robin, you want to kind of talk us through it? Okay, so it's for Yusufa Sidib. Dibby, I think is how you spell his last name, who was the African drumming. Yep. So for 2021, we approved um, a grant for 10 workshops for that 200 each. Um, so I received, this is still on the reimbursement way of, of doing the grant. So I received something from him, um, I'm sure, okay. So he dated it to 11.22, but I received it early March. 
um, with a note saying that he did a workshop and it was at UMass. The original grant was for Amherst Public School workshops. And he said he did it on November 30th, 2021 uh, from uh, Amherst Media. And uh, as far as that, and he, um, he says he has <clears throat> photos and email correspondence um, as documentation, but he hasn't sent any. So if one, I asked him to send me some documentation of that. And for the, this one workshop, he is charging us a thousand dollars. So there's a few issues for me, which is one, the workshops are 200 each and he did one. Um, and the other is it wasn't the intended audience. And I'm not sure we've ever encountered this before. Um, so he also sent his contract for 2022 and I feel pretty strongly that we would need to reinforce that the workshop he workshops he, he if he does any workshops they have to be for the intended audience. So the question is do we even pay for the one workshop? Um, is there any discussion about paying the thousand dollars he put down or <laughs> for me there isn't but Mm -hmm. So, um, go ahead, Jenny, please. Or Julie. Um, I was just clearing my throat, but I. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, this isn't exactly what we we granted for, nope. but we don't also don't know if there was a hardship um, around COVID in the school, so that we may need some backup explanation. Um, why why there was only one workshop or if he has correspondence about um, trying to place the event um, in the schools and them not being able to do that. So I, I think we need a little bit more information. Um, we didn't say, and Matt, didn't you have some conversations with him earlier? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been an ongoing, discussion but you know so similar to to your concern around um audience and number of uh presentations um I, you know he to, to jenny's point he has made a lot of efforts uh at outreach or at least has kind of described a lot of outreach outreach efforts with the schools and i and i do think that certainly last year covid played you know um played a factor in getting himself scheduled so i I mean, one thought that I that I had would be to, um, you know, formally ask him to make the request to to you know for this for this tweak um, to his grant, and then I think explain you know sort of the the good thinking behind um, what the rate per performance would be, and you know find a find a reasonable way to reimburse him for um, partial you know completion of the grant. But I think that would have to come to us as a request to make those make those revisions. Um, um, the revision meaning the intended audience, or the revision meaning a thousand dollars of workshop. The attendant audience. Usually, we ask for um, a letter or something explaining why um, an event was going to be postponed or rescheduled or has changed for any reason. So I think we could ask him to do that um, in a formal way. That way we have um, some explanation why the grant um, funding is, it, it will probably need to change too, but um, because, you know, spanning 10 workshops for, was it 10 workshops he was in? He, yes, with, with nothing set up, with no letters of support. I mean, I, I was a little, I wondered how he was going to do that many, but, you know. 
So, um, I mean, we had been funding workshops around three or $400 each, um, depending on how long they were. Um, I don't know if it was a, you know, a hour and a half or two hours. I mean, we, we just need some more information from him. But if he were to ask for um, a change, like we have asked others to do, um, we could go back and reconsider what the reimbursement was. And um, as Matt said, we negotiate something that's a little more reasonable um, for the one workshop that he did do. Julie? Okay, so I've pulled the panel book from last year and I feel like as we discuss this, we're perhaps modeling some of the grant requests from 2022 with the grant request from 2021. So um, there really was no in-school part of this. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to read aloud so we can kind of all get back on the same page. My program is a virtual online presentation of the traditional African music using Kora African heart drums, blah, blah, blah. Um, each happening online, the audience participation would be encouraged by inviting them to use their own drum, for example, a five gallon bucket. Um, so, you know, without, he, he's, he's noting here that it, it's uh, difficult to go in, into the schools at these difficult times, um, but he believes strongly that music could get folks through. So, um, the targeted audience students from elementary schools and high schools, but it was always intended to be virtual and online and accessible. So I'm a little confused why we have one event at UMass in person instead of a virtual event and why the virtual events couldn't happen. It wasn't virtual, I don't think. Well, I, he said it was you have your 2021 panel book. Oh, no, no, no. He said it was going to be virtual. The one that he did wasn't virtual. Yeah, yeah. So I just- oh, No, I, I, I read it. I reread it. Okay, yeah. So I just don't see why only one event could happen. That's all. He did say he'd be calling the schools to book the program and use social media, um, but he wasn't going into the schools and it was after school. So it's the kind of thing that easily could have come to parents in that, that email that has happenings in the community. That's all for context. I get those all, all the time. If there's something going on, lots of folks are good at getting the word out to the community. And I, I mean, I strongly supported this. I thought as far as culture, this <laughs> sounded like super fun and like something kids would wanna do. And um, it, it served diverse communities and, but uh, I am I am a bit frustrated in the execution. I, I I don't understand the messaging that we're getting back, and it seemed like what we did grant was really doable. Cool. Yeah, I, I would just um, say I agree with asking for a formal change request because you know he proposed one thing and he did something different. That happens fairly often actually on this committee. It seems like just typically they ask first. Um, so I would, I would just go back to him and give a list of questions that we want answered in a, in a letter and we can go from his response. But I don't really know if we have enough information to meet his request as it is. I, Robin. Um, so a few people told me, I mean, the, what, yes, things change, but the attended audience doesn't change like this that I'm aware of, um, because this was for school kids. And um, I didn't support this as everyone knows because I didn't see how it was gonna, he, he didn't have anything set up. I mean, if it happened, I thought it'd be like phenomenal, but I just, there was no support for it. There was no backup. There was nothing set up um, and it didn't, it didn't happen. And, so I'm not sure, are people saying we should actually pay more than 200 a workshop? Cool. I would just say, Robin, I think I, I agree with you. The intended audience change is a pretty big deal to me. I would just like to see why he thought of doing that. You know, give him a chance to explain, you know, this is valuable for this reason. And then once we get that, we can decide, do we want to allow this change? But without any explanation from him, it's really hard to say. Well, I think 
he needed to do something and he wasn't able to set it up in the school. His, his, so, yeah, but I don't know. Well, maybe, maybe this professor offered him, said, hey, come do a workshop. So I would, I'm going to say, I think what I hear the consensus is that more correspondence is needed with him. Um, I like the idea of, of a form, you know, putting forward a formal request. I, I'm looking through, I have a bunch of email chains with him, various, you know, kind of various updates and things, um, you know, over the, over the two year, you know, the two year, the two grant cycles. I'm going to suggest that whoever it does reach out to him for a formal um, application, uh, you know, what, what do we call it? What do you call it, Cole? Cole? A formal change request? Yeah. I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah. Sounds, change sounds body. Good. yeah. That's what they call it in the grant book. So what do they call it? I'm sorry. Intended audience. Oh, right. But more broadly speaking, like a change request, you know, change in audience, you know, why did you only do one as opposed to 10, et cetera? Um, you know, the rate, because ultimately I think we're leaning towards uh reimbursing him at the rate that he was granted, but not for the full, you know, not for the full thing. So, so I would say whoever does reach out to him, um, we might want to think about printing a letter and putting it in the mail and also potentially talking it through by phone or, or some other way, because I, I do think that there may be some potential language or, you know, other cultural barriers that are getting in the way of some of the communication stuff going on here. And I want to be, you know, sensitive to that as well. So, um, Joy. Um, I just wanted to um, basically throw my support behind that statement. I was wondering if there was actually even broader, you know, besides just emailing you, is there other support, you know, again, this being my first year here, other support for people who to check in if they can't do something and things like that. Right. I mean, that that's dovetails nicely into the accessibility conversation coming up soon. I think that's one of the big questions we'll be exploring. I, I don't know. I mean, we, we could have a motion to, you know, try to set the um, correspondence up. We could also just sort of agree that that further correspondence is needed and that a, a formal request isn't like a, a change request is needed. Should we develop a form? Because this might not be the only time this comes up. Yeah, so it's standardized. It's a good idea. Did anybody want to volunteer to develop a form for a change request? Well, I'm kind of not on his side on this. So I'm not sure I'm the one who should be writing it, but I am the treasurer, so I probably am. Or at least a draft of it. I'd, I'd be happy to work on that. And I think it just comes down to some of the like check boxes for the key criteria. And that way, once they're checking off what they've changed, they've acknowledged that they've changed the audience, <laughs> they've changed the date, that they've changed the number of events, you know, suddenly you're, you're checking all the boxes and then we would ask them to explain why each one of those checked boxes is, is changed. I think it can be pretty straightforward and, and um, I'm not sure, I'll have to co coordinate with Cindy about the mechanism for sharing that, uh, where it's appropriate to put it, all of that good stuff. But I'd be happy to draft something um, and everybody can then hash it out and make sure it's what we need. Okay. Thanks. I, yeah, I appreciate Brandies it. Can, yes, sorry. Grantees can do, we could, you know, if they have several workshops or several performances, but they can do one, one and then bill us for it. You know, yeah. there is something on the form that says partial. I mean, that's that has is done commonly. So for me, that's not the issue. The issue is change of completely change of audience um, from public school students to UMass students, um, and then you know the bill for the cost of five workshops for one. So yeah. I think it's I think it's a good point. Go, go ahead, Joy. With the change to the UMass students, um, you know, we do try to, to fund projects and we are committed to funding projects that are open and accessible to the public. And it wasn't. 
And in this case, I think one of the things that's perhaps really kind of getting to Robin is, is it doesn't meet our requirements that it be accessible to the public in, in, in this way. Um, and there are ways to do that. If you had chosen to pick a spring day and do it in some common area outside and advertise it that way and it happened to be at UMass, that could have been open to the public, but it is a pretty big change. So, but I, again, everyone was just trying to do the pandemic. So I agree with, Hold, with Cole that he deserves a, a chance to, you know, put forth the reasoning and, and get something for his efforts that I'm sure is much needed funding for artists. So I would, I would just make one minor tweak, which is I, I think that a form is a great idea and having a standardized practice is a great idea. Um, I think that, you know, you could just reach out to him with some of these questions and, and develop a form from, in other words, I, I hate to have to wait a whole nother month plus before we sort of, you know, get back to him about the process of, of um, requesting these changes. So I, I would say, you know, um, whatever kind of process you use in this correspondence is something we can all sort of learn from and adopt and, and, and carry forward. Um, but I, th I think that's a good next step for, for the um, Yusufa question. And, you know, Robin, I appreciate the, the work on it. Um, in the interest of time, I, I'm gonna suggest we move forward unless there's any more discussion on, on this one for now. So, Okay, so I put two somewhat deceptively short questions on the uh, accessibility event item on our agenda. And truly one of those two questions is, is pretty short. Just, um, you know, Charles Baldwin with MCC, who is their accessibility person, is available on the 27th or the 28th of April. And I think those are two of the dates that we had identified. So, so the easy question is, you know, which of those two dates, if either would we wanna do with, with Charles? Um, the more challenging question is, you know, what, is, what are some of the things that are going to go into organizing and communicating this, this accessibility event? And I would just say, as I, as I understood our last conversation to be that um, we want this to, be, to, begin the to begin the conversation around accessibility, not to be the end all be all. Um, you know, this isn't the culminating event. This is sort of a, a way to prompt a larger public dialogue. Um, cause I think a lot of us went into this thinking we would do it in the fall. And I think we still probably are thinking we'll do the larger event in the fall where we might bring in, you know, several speakers and things like that. But I thought there was really good energy in our last meeting around the idea of, um, just bumping things up in terms of the, how public the conversation is and just sort of getting more voices, frankly, more diverse and, and a broader range of voices, uh, to the table to even sort of think through this event, um, and I do uh, one one last thing, and then I'll and then I'll um, turn it over. But one, I do have two lists: one from the FY twenty one grants, and one from the FY twenty two grants of awardees who indicated interest in some kind of an accessibility roundtable. So you know, as we think about communicating and organizing this April event, um, you know, we know that we have a nucleus there, and then of course we can message it out to our entire grantee list. But I would maybe customize a message to the people who said they were interested, just. Um, to try to reel them into the to the discussion. And the other thing, the other caveat is I am traveling that I'm coming back that very that weekend. So I I'm cautious about over I, over committing to too much, you know, shortly before the event. And I just want to be upfront about that because I I don't want to leave anybody hanging. And didn't we format it though that it was going to be somewhat casual? It's not going to be terribly structured, and Charles Baldwin's likely to take the lead. So I'm just saying, I, I think you don't have to stress about it as long as you can show up. Again, of course, I might be more comfortable winging it than the average Joe, but I, I think we're good just to have a discussion and facilitate it. But do let us know if your travels delay you. So is Charles going to? facilitate this and see this, whatever we want to call it? Well, or... I, yeah, I mean, I, I only sent the one email that I copied um, a couple of you on was the, is the only correspondence we've had. So it's very open-ended. He's, you know, he'll roll with the punches no matter how we kind of, you know, set things up. He's going to, I think he's going to be able to embrace, you know, embrace the, the format. Um, 
I think, yeah. So, so I, I, I don't think he's made a commitment to being a keynote per se, but, but I think he'd be comfortable, you know, taking the, taking the mic for, for a good chunk of the time. Joy. Um, I, I do have the email um, in front of me. He did say it could be him, but I, he has ideas about others. Um, obviously getting to know projected outcomes from the round table would help. So I think it from that, it seems like he's open to facilitating or moderating, right? Um, and maybe if we can just talk about possible outcomes, we can just go back with him and say, here are the outcomes that we're hoping for and we'll see you know, do you have any thoughts? Could you take lead or would you prefer us to like structure it more? Um, you know, since since he would be the expert, I think if he's happy to take the lead, I'm happy to let him. And then we just, then on our side, it just becomes Zoom meeting and getting people in the door or in the room. Yeah. So uh, Robin, please. So are we talking about getting other people from Amherst, regular citizens, uh, people who have special, you know, specific interests in accessibility, other people in other cultural institutions around here, or are we talking about, and or actually, are we talking about uh, people from other local cultural councils, or at least local local cultural councils, or maybe not just local, or yeah, I mean, I think it's an important question because, you know, we know we have a set of our grantees, about 25 grantees over the two years who said, you know, yeah, sign me up, I'm interested. Um, and that's maybe our most focused audience. Um, yeah. But then I, I, I totally agree. I mean, other other town boards and other town, you know, a, um, agencies and, and uh, institutions. Um, and then I, I love the idea of, you know, expanding out to Northampton and South Hadley and, and, you know, looping in. So I think having that broad, as, as broad as we want, but I think staying focused on our grantees as our, as our most important audience um, makes sense to me, especially because a lot of these people were the ones who got on board with uh, last year's, you know, the accessibility supports where we actually did fund, you know, direct services and things like that too. So some of these folks have already put in quite a bit of investment into the, um, the idea. And I'd, I'd add the key sentiment from the last meeting was why hold off until the fall? You know, we can basically take this and springboard into something much more structured or even a series of things in the fall, but let's get started. I think Joy put that forth in particular and I really appreciated that, that, that thought as far as, you know, we don't have to overdo it, we can get started. And a lot of good ideas will come out of it and we can build on it. So let me bring us, bring us back to the simpler question and then we'll have to jump back to the more, I think the outcome, I do wanna come back to your outcomes point, Joy. I think that really does hit the nail on the head what Charles said. Um, but the simpler question is, does anybody have a preference on those two dates? That was the 27th or 28th of April. No preference. Either is fine for me, moment. Seven. Either April, but I have a preference for the 28th as well. Yeah, 28th is better for me. All right. I think I'm free for both. Um, so I, unless going once, going twice. <laughs> and then, Joy, I'm wondering if you, or actually, let me not do that. If anybody wants to volunteer to sort of get reach back out to Charles and sort of help us foster that communication moving it along. Um, you know, I, I, why don't, why don't we come back to that? I think outcomes is, is yeah. probably the more important thing for us to discuss right now. Um, and, and for me personally, just because we set aside some funds, within our larger um, you know, grant picture, our larger allocation picture. Um, for me, one of the important outcomes is that we do formulate, you know, start to formulate a vision for what we can do 
um, on a larger scale in the fall, you know. Um, so I think I think that would be one thing is, you know, using this as, as just a as a place to foster dialogue, um, but also as a springboard towards, um, you know, a slightly more formal event that, that, that does bring in some, you know, celebrity guests, so to speak. Oh, you had your hand up. Yeah, you yeah. Um, I, I think that's a, a good thing to learn. What could the people that we're trying to serve, you know, the artists in this area, what could they get out of an event about arts and the, the arts and accessibility? I'd also like to learn what we can do for, for artists to make our process more accessible um, and also to help them make their art more accessible. So learning about, you know, as a, as a council, what can we do? But also more specifically, if we were to hold an event, what would, what would they like to learn? That sort of thing. Great. Robin? Um, I also, and this may be just stating it differently, to bring in artists and other people of culture who might need accessibility, um, accommodations, or even how do we reach those people to produce art, not just, oh, we're having something and we'll have signers, which, which is great, but also, you know, there's a lot, there's actually a lot of, uh, there are a lot of disabled, you know, wheelchair dancers. There are a lot of people who are deaf who are actually musicians um, and there are organizations and as well as individuals. So how do we help someone even write the grant and do some sort of event um, that isn't just, you know, this straight, whatever we've been doing event, and then we're gonna make it more, you know, a little bit accessible for people. I'm not sure if I actually explained that well, but I'd like to reach out to other, to the communities that we, we're trying to serve, I guess, and to see if they want to produce culture. Yeah, and I think that's an idea. I mean, you've, you've carried that idea forward before too, and I think it's important, you know, to have a more diverse, in all, in all ways, but a more diverse, a continually, you know, more diverse slate of actual grantees. I mean, you know, at a bottom line for the council, but but more broadly too, a more diverse. So I think that's, and I do think that's a distinct outcome from, you know, also important from what from what Cole said. Yeah. We have one person. So that's I mean that's three or four right there. Um, that sounds pretty good to me in terms of sort of starting the conversation. Um, Joy. Just a quick clarification, and sorry if this seems obvious, but when we're talking about accessibility um, in this space, based on your comment from earlier as well, are we just talking about accessibility in terms of people with disabilities, or are we also talking about accessibility in terms of like people who don't know the language or who might need extra support in writing a grant application or, you know, uh, figuring out a digital zoom thing because maybe that's the same but maybe it's I, I think it's a little bit different so i want to understand that distinction uh, all of it i think i mean we have talked about how it, it it seems like there are some people who you know the grant is written in a certain way in a certain form and not everybody understands that i mean it's difficult enough for anyone to write a grant so how do we make that more accessible to people? How do we make it um, that we're serving the grantees rather than they're trying to fit themselves into our little old, you know, developed in English um, types of applications? I mean, the, the town of Amherst now does have a more accessible grant, which is pretty new. Before that, they did have, supposedly at least, their accessibility was about different spoken and written and written languages. Um, and that is definitely an, an issue, for sure. 
So I think it's all of it. And it's a lot. I mean, it's basically changing the culture. I mean, one one his one piece of the the puzzle is where this started for us as a council was pretty narrowly focused on disability accommodations. Um, and and in a lot of ways, that's that's a more straightforward set of services. So we we set aside funds and we funded services. Um, and so you know that that happened. We did a lot of work on it last year. But I think it's it's been our constant hope that we can make things more accessible. Uh, language wise, um, cultural, culture wise, you know, and, and, you know, lived experience, like, you know, it, it, a lot, I, I, a lot of times we'll talk about a grantee and say, I think this might be a first time grant writer, you know, and, and this is, these are cultural grants, you know, it's not necessarily folks who are sitting in a, you know, university setting and, and have, you know, access to that kind of, um, that knowledge base or whatever you want to call it. So I, I think the broader we can keep, or the broader we can, in our messaging around this, the more broad, more broadly we define accessibility um, and diversity, you know, the the better we'll do. And I, and I think we can, at least I feel confident that the disability group will always remain um, inside of that circle. But I think that you know the bigger we can make the circle, the better. And uh, to Cole's point about things that we that we personally can do that are not a question of money, but more of you know structure. Um, you know, trying to host more workshops, trying to be more available. I, I certainly have had a few, you know, fairly uh, powerful experiences with folks on the phone or over Zoom where I, you know, you just tell people get overwhelmed by email chains and they get overwhelmed by the MCC website. Um, and, and so, you know, talking stuff through with, with people is sometimes um, one good way to make things more accessible. So I think, I think a broad brush is, is important here. So again, I don't know if we if we necessarily need a motion so much as a, vo a volunteer. <laughs> um, to do what? To speak with Charles? Well, I think I think there's a couple of major tasks that sit in front of us here. Um, there is, you know, just speaking with Charles or, or you know, emailing to Charles and sort of laying out um, the outcomes and, and some of our ideas. There is. Um, Truly developing, you know, de developing some language that we can use in an in an email or you know other means of communication too, um, but language that we can use to describe what we're trying to do on the twenty eighth of April, which is you know less than a month away. Um, so and and again, I, I think we're we're comfortable being loose in terms of what this is, um, but it still does need to be you know kind of written and and um, and disseminated. So I guess those are the two big tasks, you know, asking Cindy to schedule a Zoom meeting with the town account, that's not a big deal. That's, you know, that's kind of par for the course with, with the council. Julie. There's one other task, which is the social media outreach, because we definitely want to get the word out. So also executing on social media, but also executing on whatever the email lists are that you were mentioning. Yeah. Joy? And then also, are we going to have a like a sign language interpreter for this? Yes. That's we a good should. point. Yeah. Well, one thing we learned last year is it's not hard. I mean, there's no guarantee that somebody's going to be available, but it's not hard to actually put it in through the commission for the for the deaf. So that is one piece of institutional knowledge we now have <laughs> is that there's a there's a pretty straightforward platform for doing it, especially in the Zoom era. Um, but no, you're right. That's that's a key point in terms of accessibility. Um, I mean, on the one hand, Zoom is a nice, you know, it's the most convenient forum for something like this. On the other hand, I, you know, I, I think that it just, by definition, creates a barrier for some folks who are not, you know, comfortable with the with with the format. Um, but I don't I don't think we really have an option to do it in person, you know, in this kind of a time frame. So. But I can definitely set up the uh, the ASL request. I'm happy to do that. I've I've done that for for a bunch of stuff in the past. Mm 
I can contact Charles, but it would be nice if somebody could give me the notes from the meeting as far as the outcomes and, um, you know, maybe he can help with some of the language on what we're doing unless someone wants to to take point on that as well. No, he thank you. Our, yeah. He helped us with our language on the guidelines, so. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. We gave him something to respond to at the guidelines, and he gave us tons of great notes on that too. So, um, right. I think I think the important thing is just the willingness to to get it started and and start that back and forth. Um, okay, I'm. You know, I think we need to keep on moving, but I will say that um, I I don't know. Do folks should are we thinking about trying to have another council meeting before the twenty eighth? I mean, that seems that seems ambitious to me. You know, uh, that being said, if 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 we need to have prep for the twenty eighth, you know, I could see the argument for it as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I guess personally, I'm going to suggest that we do at least at least, you know, mark something as a, as a placeholder that we can always cancel later. But I just, I, I worry about sort of, you know, two or three of us getting in touch with Charles, getting things rolling, and then we feel getting overwhelmed by the decisions that need to be made or anything. I mean, um, how do others feel? I, I'd be, I'm happy to be persuaded otherwise. It's just, it just seems like it'd be, it might be smart to have something on the books at least. I think having it in the holster would be good and then cancel if necessary. I mean, otherwise we just meet again and what's the, what are we doing? I mean, I'm all for just going with things, but some things have to be a little bit more organized. As long as we have an outline, you know, and that it's agreed with Charles, you know, I, I think we can just go with it. it. You know, we set it up to not, to, to be more of a discussion for this very point because several people felt that it was just too much going on to try to do something rather structured now. So I'd, I'd be fine to just, you know, go straight into the meeting as long as we have that communication clear with Charles. Well, I'm just trying to think about how his, you know, how he's gonna experience the, the prep for all of this and, and such. I think you know. I, I think that doing it over emails is is probably fine with you know Joy and and if she, if you want to pull in others, Joy, I'd be happy you know others to to join that conversation or not. Um, I think that's I think that's fine. I mean, so I, I guess are we thinking that that this will ultimately this will be basically a roundtable that we are organizing, but but really we're only we as as council members are only participants in it. We're not we're not actually hosting the discussion. That's the impression that that I got. That we'd basically hand the reins to Charles to do some moderation, and then we'd learn from people. And also, I mean, we can we can speak as well, but you know, we're, it's not like an event that we're hosting. Well, it is, but it's not. You know, that that's the thing. I mean, I I, I would I would be maybe Joy. Maybe you should explore that with Charles. You know, see if 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 he's comfortable with that idea, then I am. You know, I think we all are. I just I want to make sure that it makes that makes sense to him before we. <laughs> completely commit yeah no I, oh go ahead joy um sorry no i was just gonna say you know this all depends on charles also being able to to put this together because then we're leaning completely on him at this point um so um i'm happy to get in touch with him if i could just see see either matt or julie or robin or whoever wants to be involved just so i have a second in case like i miss an email or you know we come up with something that you guys, since again, first time we're here, are like, no, that's not how we're gonna do it. Um, that would be great. Um, but, you know, if, yeah, I'd be happy to hand the reins over to him and we just facilitate like having the meeting. Because again, it's, it's a matter of, I think, getting him or another expert or somebody uh, connected with the grantees. And that's really the conversation that needs to happen. Yeah, 
I'm almost imagining a message that says something like, you know, the ACC is pleased to present Charles Baldwin Excessive Inclusion and Access Program Officer from MCC on a, you know, on a roundtable discussion of all matters relating to culture and accessibility, you know, and, and kind of speak him up <laughs> if, you know, if he's game, if he's game for it. I think that that sounds good. And I have to say the last time, you know, anytime he's interacted with us, he's been a natural and really comfortable talking with small and large groups. It's kind of what he, he does. So yeah. you know, from, from those past experiences, it seems straightforward. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, um, unless Jenny, I, were, you, were you trying to make a comment, Jenny? Um, I was just going to offer, we did have a, you know, a, a few of us who had met before around accessibility and if it would be helpful for that handful of people, you know, Joy, if you find you need more, more help um, to offer that, that help to you or pass the reins to us or something like that. So you don't feel like, you know, you're, you're, all of a sudden you and Charles are putting together this event or if there's more questions, um, because we did have that group um, who was working on other accessibility issues last year. But I, of course, that's me offering the group up. So, <laughs> but I would be willing to, to help if you need, need anything. Yeah. Yeah. Jenny, thanks for bringing that up. And to that, we'd have to be careful of quorum and too many people. So. I wasn't in that group. I'm happy to be copied on any emails, but if we have to consolidate our numbers to make sure we don't have too many of us. Um, yeah. Yeah. Then yeah, it was a small there are folks who are working more closely on that who should right. be involved. Right. So I guess I'm offering myself up if you, you know, if you need help with something. Um, okay. Do you mind if you were the person then I CC? Not at all. And that way, you know, after this initial reach back out to Charles, if you want to offer any additional comments from, you know, the group, then we can, we can do that. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Jen. You're welcome. Enjoy. As a first person, first time person last year working on the accessibility stuff a lot, I will say that Jenny was a great help. To me as well as we as we and to all I mean everybody was but but you're you have a good a good partner there. Um, thank you, Matt. Um, okay, well this is that's really exciting and I'm I'm I think it's it's going to be a neat a neat launch to our um, to the accessibility work this year and and a good really the right thing to do you know and and kind of lives our uh, our guideline was priorities it lives our priorities you know in, in the guidelines. Um, so I want to move over to, to item five, which is the grants update. And this is more of a, a general chance for Robin to kind of speak to where we are with the grant cycle for FY22. Not to show what people want to know, the um, allocation, which is the money that MCC gives to the towns and cities for their local cultural councils has not come in. Um, the way they do that is they send a contract to the town member, in our case, it's usually Holly, who is the controller who deals with our account, you know, signs it off, sends it back, the money comes in, I'm not sure how long that takes. And then um, the contracts, so this year there are contracts for each grantee. So then the contracts will get, you know, processed and they'd be than their money. Um, it should have gone out to us. We are not the only town who has not received a contract, um, but contracts have gone out to other towns. So I don't know what's going on. The person who sends them, I believe he's, he's told he was new. Um, so after speaking with Holly, um, we decided I would pursue the MCC end of it, and um, this guy just has not gotten back to me from last week and from this week. So either tomorrow, someone busy, or Thursday, if I haven't heard back from him, I'm going to go above him. 
the person who told me that to call him and contact him. And um, I just asked him if it hadn't gone out, should we send it? Um, it's not, it's clearly not alphabetical because Watertown has theirs and Amherst doesn't. So unless they're inverting it, um, I don't know if they all go out at once, but they sh we should have received our contract by now. And we can't pay our grantees until we have the money. We can pay the, re the, the reimbursement you know, from 21, you know, those who we extended, but we can't pay our 2022. Even though the money will come in and the town ostensibly has it, it's a different account, so. Most of, almost all of the um, contracts have come in. Um, unfortunately, especially from dramatic accessibility, the, the little fairy festival in, in Belgiatown, they have not sent the contract yet. Possibly, you know, we wondered how that was gonna come off and maybe they, I, I don't know. Um, Thank you, sweet. And Andy Grant, which was the whole thing about the town and the name of the town, that did not happen um, the day that it was supposed to. And I have not been asked for an extension, but I would like to contact him about it. Um, and the other ones are that um, Gabriel Gould has requested an extension of the Celebration of the Arts Amherst Black Party at the Drake, the date we, because it was actually the cultural district and I'm the council's rep to the district. And we had come up with April 23rd so that we'd still have students, but we'd miss Easter and Pesach, which I believe is the next weekend. Something else is happening at the Drake. The Drake is definitely going to open. It's, it gave, it gave me a tour and it's great. It's going to be amazing. Um, so she's requested an extension, um, but apparently we have to, the board has to meet of the cultural district in order to approve a date. Um, and the other one is that Dr. Chavaz, the Kwanzaa celebration at Stephen at Hazel's didn't, or at least I know Hazel's didn't open. I'm pretty sure the celebration didn't happen, but he sent me the contract for the payment for it, which it didn't happen, so we can't pay for it. I did email him asking him if he wants to request an extension of the date, as well as to put in sort of a little, you know, on the side if cases doesn't open to be allowed to have it at a different Amherst venue. And I have not heard back from him. And there's maybe one or two others that haven't come in and all the rest are in. So I have a couple of questions, and thank you for this, for your all the work. Um, I have a couple of quick questions on this. Um, so I think we do need to make a decision, right? The the Drake, they did put in a formal request to get an extension on there. Um, so that, and we don't need to do it this second, but that will take a, a motion and a quick vote um, right. to approve that. Um, my, I, so this is the, and everybody knows, this is our first year of doing the direct granting model. And so it does create some more interesting situations that we, you know, we have to think through as, as they come along. So I heard you mention at least two, um, right, where the event did not happen and the uh, grantee sent us their contract. And, and technically what is supposed to happen is we get the contracts, we give the contracts to the town and the town pays out. And so now we're in this position where somebody's event has passed we know that it hasn't happened. They give us the contract. We have to make a decision. Do we pass that over to the town or do we, and I think what we have to do is, is something to sim similar to what is going on with UCIFA, right? Which is ask for clarification, you know, um, how formal that needs to be, I think depends on what the person wants to do or, you know, what, what's, what's going on with the particulars of it. Um, but, but to me, the two that you mentioned, the uh, Andy Grant and then the Kwanzaa, you know, both of those, I, I think, Robin, you need to sit on the, we need to sit on the contracts until we understand. Not signing off on it. 
<laughs> yeah, until we understand. It's what my signature. So, um, yeah. well, Andy did not ask for an extension. In fact, he had posted something on Facebook about it. And I, as a private citizen, said, um, how do I access this? I'm interested in this. And he spoke, he said, sadly, it hasn't happened. Um, I actually can't find that whole interaction, but um, I look I looked back at the, you know, the grant book and it didn't happen. I think it's a really important thing to happen. I mean, we talked a whole lot about this. This is the, the one about the name of the town and and uh, why and the history and what it means. And um, so I um, I would like to contact him to ask him if he wants to ask for an extension. And the same thing with Dr. Shabazz. So Andy did not submit any contract at all. Um, Dr. Shabazz submitted, but it didn't happen. He may think it's more of a reimbursement issue that he's sending than um, a direct grant contract, something that didn't happen. I don't know. But I had tried to get a couple of messages to him saying, you know, ask him if he wants to request an extension to next year because it's sponsored. So it can't just happen in August. Um, and um, so I hadn't heard from him. Um, but I do know May Hazel's didn't open, and I don't know if it will. Restaurants are notoriously difficult to get open, um, which is why I suggested, you know, he asked for the possibility of a different venue in Amherst, though. Um, so I just want to know, is it okay if I continue to contact him and Andy? And also, I guess, for a little fairy festival to see you know what they're doing. There was one other two, and I have the list, and I cannot find the right pivot. Oh, get organized, and you can't find anything. Um, so those were all one pulled out, and yeah, Sean French Burn, which I don't remember what this was, but it's. Um, hasn't sent in, Andy hasn't sent in. So Robin, I'm going to um, just pause for a quick second and because I, you know, just in order to keep things moving, I know we do need to make a motion for, um, sorry, uh, for the Drake. So do we want to just make sure we get that order of business kind of taken care of and then and, and that, we're going to talk about just a, a general, I mean, it's just a general extension on the date, right? So we're not, and, and technically, you know, the grantee, we do expect them to do what they say they're going to do, but technically, if they do it within this this calendar year, it's not really a problem. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, so well, I I don't I, I think I think you would need formal approval to go beyond the year. You know, but anyway, I think if, if folks ask us for an extension request, we should we should vote on it. You know, in a proper way. Um, I can so make a motion. I, I I motion to extend the date for the Drake celebration of the arts for. Up to the end of this calendar year. Yeah. I'll second. Thank you. Looking, looking forward to going, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we want to just do a quick roll call. Uh, that was Jenny seconding. Yep. Um, Robin. Um, yes. Arthur. Yes, sir. Joy. Yes. Uh, Cole. Yes. And I am a yes as well, so that passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, and and then, Robin, you're already in touch with Gabriel, right? So you can let her know. Well, no, I'm not. That, or should that come from? Um, I'll let her know. I can let her know. I mean, I'm the one who told her to ask for the extension. So. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Um, um, these these other questions, though, I think you know, you're doing the right thing by just holding on the contracts and not sharing them with the town. And, um, you know, there is the, the setup of the whole contract is such that, you know, the person agrees to, to do their activity um, and, and then to submit a final report. And, and the, the, yeah. the, the real account, and I use a word accountability with very loose, you know, um, terms, but the real accountability is in that final report, you know, and, and so um, if somebody failed, and that's the letter that we sent out to them, it, you know, is, is to that effect that, 
if you don't submit the final report, then you will have to return the, the funds. And I think we gave them a two week deadline for that. Um, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with the idea of sitting on the contracts, but I, I wanna just be, just be cautious about it because I, I think the argument could go both ways. You know, the argument could be that the grantee has the whole year to expend the funds, you know, and the other side is no, you made an agreement to us to, you know, to do your thing on such and such a date. And um, I, I think we're in the right, you know, to, to ask them for a new date. I think that's perfectly appropriate, but I just want to be sensitive to the fact that, you know, um, ultimately the accountability is in that final report. Does that make sense? Right. Well, it, it, with the Hansa celebration, it's not that there wasn't a final report, it's that it didn't happen. So we can't pay for something that didn't happen. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't. Happen right. to That's why I said, you know, do you want to ask for an extension to, you know, next year to 22? Yeah. And, and, you know, I don't think that's a bad thing. And so I wanted to also ask Andy if he wants an extension. So he may not know that he could get one. Um, I think these are different than the earlier issue. Yes, yes. However, it is still seeking clarification. My only point is just yeah. seeking clarification. So, Julie. Yeah, I think we probably spent enough time on it, but you know, it it is a difficult situation in that the longer it's taking to get the contract through no fault of our own, that suddenly the clock is ticking on people who had earlier dates. And I think to Matt's point, we end up treating certain people differently than other people. Other people are de facto kind of getting an extension to the end of the year because they're scheduled in June and you know they're when the money comes in, they get it and we have no control over it. And then we've got this discrete group here that had earlier dates. So we have control and we're used to kind of acting on those dates. So I think you're doing everything exactly right. Um, but I do think we have to be sensitive that, you know, suddenly we are treating some people differently just because they had earlier dates. Um, it's, it's, it's a nuance and we're learning as we go through this first year of this process. Um, so right. thank they you so much for reaching out and working with everyone. The contracts were never approved before the end of the year into the next year. So, I mean, it's a weird contract. It's a weird grant cycle where you start applying in October or, this year or November. You don't know until like <clears throat> January, but you can apply for grants from the previous, what, July or something mm -hmm. through that time. You no, know you're not going to get paid for it until at least into the next calendar year. I mean, it's just, and this year, unfortunately, it's, it's like last year the money didn't come into like May. So, um, you know, it's COVID. I think things have changed. The schedule was definitely at least two weeks later because we started two weeks later. I don't know why some councils have received their contracts and therefore their money and some haven't even received the contracts. I wonder um, if they have smaller grant award amounts. We do have a hefty chunk. They definitely have smaller number and smaller amounts. I mean, like it's very significantly different. Um, so, but I, I don't know. The contract should come out. The guy is, is new. It may be a new system. Some of us might have gotten lost, but I know we're not the only ones because I contacted other councils to see what was yeah. going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised to hear that. I mean, I was looking, I just looked back through my emails, February 16th, Mina said that she thought the contracts were out. And anybody who didn't catch that, you know, Mina Kim was a great uh, liaison to us for, for several years with MCC and she, you know, she's left as well. So I, I think it's safe to say there's probably some back end um, issues happening at, at MCC on this front too, but, but who knows? So so Robin, thank you very much. And, um, you know, we'll just kind of stay, stay in communication about with the grantees, you know, as these, I think they're going to keep on coming in more and more people inquiring about the funds. That's and, okay. Just forward yep. it to me. I, I've said this to many people, you know, and even when I send stuff out later, even if they have an asset, I've said, well, we don't have the money yet. So it may be, you know, a couple of weeks, but, you know, so don't expect it next week. Okay, so we do have a, a newer question. Um, this is an item that Julie came to you. Do you want to kind of speak to it? 
Yeah, and it's perhaps going to be difficult to speak to it without Leah here. I'm glad that Cole's here. Um, I um, was helping, I'm on the board over at Amherst Ballet, I was helping them with some outreach that they're doing for some urgent kind of emergency fundraising. And it occurred to me that, hey, maybe we could, uh, they could put a snippet of, you know, 30, 60 seconds from the showcase into their video in the interest of time. And because the work was so nice, so I coordinated with, with Cole and Leah and Matt, and I was over at Amherst Media, literally downloading the files. And um, Jim asked me if it would be possible for Amherst Media to start kind of presenting some of the work out of the showcase. And, you know, uh, on the one hand, we have our own plans to, to officially launch that work. But, you know, on the other hand, um, the, the work is, you know, was ideally would have come out in the fall and the sooner it gets out there, the more it benefits those artists and the community. So I don't know that we can come to any decisions certainly without Leah, but um, we could certainly discuss and maybe come up with some provisional plan if, if Leah is amenable after we update her or something like that. Um, I, I would turn it over to, to, to Matt and, and, and Cole certainly did so much work. You know, I just said I'd, I'd put the idea out there. Cole, do you want to? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think that's a fantastic idea. I would want to make sure that we know what they're going to do so we can inform the artists who we interviewed and, you know, who, whose work we took pictures of. Um, and if they're going to show pictures of the work, I would want to check in with the artists and say, hey, um, can we do this? Because a couple of them were pretty protective of their, of their works in progress, um, which I understand. But otherwise, I think that's a fantastic idea. And I, I really like to see that material get used. Of course, I'm, I, I want to hear what Leah has to say at some point, but it's all good with me. Great. And I, I'm happy. I know you're quite busy and I know Leah's quite busy. So I'm happy to, to coordinate with, with Jim over there if we do decide to go forward and, and uh, coordinate with the artist, et cetera. So speaking to what Cole just said about the artist, is this um, trademarked? It'd be copywritten by default. You know, I have no idea about any of this. Trademark patented. All you do is you put the little symbol on the bottom of it so think officially it other people can't use it. I don't think it'd be trademarked because trademarked, that's more of a yeah, brand dressing, but it's, it's copywritten. So if their original works show up in our video, there is copy written as if you're walking by them on the street or wherever they're, they're copyright protected, no matter what. Like the whole piece? Is also copyright protected. Okay. So the, to, the, to your point, there might be some release that we have to do that, that yeah. assigns them. Like I think normally you'd license them or authorize them for certain types of usage, which is exactly what Cole was was saying right. to begin with. How would they use it? Where would they use it? You know, we we could structure that under an agreement. They're probably used to having those agreements at Amherst Media. I bet they know a lot more about it than I do. I th I think if if folks are amenable to the idea, um, just letting know, you know, letting Amherst Media know. Um, which they probably already do, but that they would need to get their own releases from the artists who are featured. That that is a good. I think it's a good a good caution. Um, cool. Another thing I wanted to add that I, I forgot to say is that it would be nice if they use the material that we made. That they put just a little, you know, two or three second thing saying this was from the Amherst Cultural Council. Apply for grants yearly at their website. Yes, <laughs> you know, um, that's why we did this. This this yeah. whole thing or at least one of the reasons, one of the big reasons. So that would be nice if they could do that. To do like a plug for, yeah. yeah. Can I ask a question? Of course. Uh, when, you, when you guys videotape them, did you ask them for a release for videotaping? So we didn't, we didn't they, never, they never signed anything, but we made sure to talk with each of them. You know, maybe we should have had them sign something. That would have been smart. Um, unfortunately, I've never done this before. We did ask them, we said, here's what we're gonna be using this interview for. And then when, we, when it came time to film them working on art or showing their art, we said, 
here's what we're going to use this for. Um, I know a couple of them said we're pretty uncomfortable with some of their art. And so um, we talked it through what we were going to do. And they eventually said, yes, that's OK with me. Um, but there was some art they wanted us to show and some art they really didn't want to show up. So if we're going to change what we use that material for, I'd, I'd like to clear it with them somehow or sign a release or something. Yeah, I think that would be a really good idea. Um, and if Amherst Media holds those um, those video clips, um, I'm not really sure where all that lives, but if they have access to it, that they need to understand that, that we need to get that release before they put it out. Um, since it's not a finished work, like it's, is it just pieces? Um, or, I mean, I don't know, do, do they have access to it now? I mean, I can, I can speak to that as far as, I mean, I okay. literally went and downloaded. So um, yes, they have all of the, okay. the work on their hard drives there. I think the fact that Jim politely asked indicates that, you know, he does respect, but he can't just use it. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, I think he would know, he would probably have a process for us and the okay. artists as far as those, those um, releases and whatnot. But you know, he was he was just like, we're just sitting on it. We could do something. Yeah. Like it. It yeah. Was kind no, of nice I'm, and collaborative and you know, it was a good energy kind of thing. Like, let's get it out there, you know. But yeah, the artists need to to be in the loop on that and in agreement. Yeah, if they're expecting it to come in a different format as a larger formatted um, piece, that mm -hmm. that's where it might get kind of touchy. And I really do think this is a perfect opportunity to reach out to them to get those releases. Um, because you could include both these smaller snippets and you can also include the larger piece all in one fell swoop. Um, and I don't think it's very complicated to write a short little release for them to sign or, or agree to. And Amherst Media might already have one. I'll and say. they might, yeah, they might have a, something all set. Do, so. do, we, do we need a provisional motion if Leah is in agreement with it that... We'll go ahead. So I, I actually want to just ask a question first because Amherst Media has kind of an amorphous um, grant with us at, for a fairly small amount of money. And I'm, I'm wondering if perhaps, you know, in the evolving nature of things like this, um, we already have sort of a partnership with them to some, to some degree. I, I, I have not heard anything from them about how they're, I mean, I think they asked for one amount and we granted them a significantly smaller amount. So I'm curious if maybe, you know, there's there's a there's already sort of an agreement set up with them to to do some work with us. Um, not not obviously not with the showcase video footage, but you know, in a in a partnership of some sort. Um, so that's just something to explore. And then what what I'm hearing is that really this is more of just connecting. Amherst Media with Cole and Leah and, and seeing if there is right a way to, I mean, really they're just offering to play the showcase for it for us, aren't they? Cole? Unfortunately, Leah and I have some throughput issues. Um, and so it, it's, it's really tough to be a full-time student and edit this sort of thing, I've noticed, especially when you have no experience with it. <laughs> um, so I, I imagine that they wouldn't use the material that we've, they wouldn't, so, Right now on the hard drive, there's basically three things. There's the interviews that we've filmed, there's the B-roll of the artists, and then there's also the um, maybe 80% finished edited product. I imagine they wouldn't use the edited product. They'd want to go through and use the interviews and the B-roll, I'd expect. Um, and I, I, if they want to use the edited product, I would maybe say, actually, we should wait on that. Um, just so we can finish it up and actually present it how we want to present it. And maybe once it's done, they can present that on Amherst Media, but I'm sure they can do a very good job, you know, video editors that they are with the interviews and the B-roll. Well, however, I will say that if you're at 80% and you have professionals sort of on hand, professionals may help you get from 80 to like 120%. You know, I mean, they may, they may take what you've done and help fully realize your vision. So. I, I would I would suggest that just that somebody connects Jim with Cole and Leah and and just see if you know see what's what's possible there because I don't I don't think we have a clear definition of what product they're looking to use do we? No, I I, I think I can 
again, you're busy as students. He approached me. I can continue to facilitate the conversation and clarify some stuff. Um, quick question with the B-roll. Is there some of that art that artists don't want shown on the B-roll potentially? No, we didn't end okay. up filming anything that they didn't want shown. Oh, good. Okay. And then the, the other thing, um, Matt, is uh, Jim put in a, a grant request for 2,500, of which we only uh, granted 10% of that 250. So whatever conversation I have with him, I'll have to be clear with him that there's no more money for this. <laughs> right. yeah. um, That's right. Yep. We, we did another... Um, donation that that got us access to using kind of as a nonprofit uh, out of the 2021 admin funds. I think it was admin, doesn't matter. And then another 250. But, you know, um, I, I could tell you, Jim would have liked to have the 2500. Um, but, you know, our duties at the Cultural Council, we had to spread that money out to the larger community. So um, he'll just need to be aware that the funds that are out there are it at least until 2023. A very important thing to be clear about, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but thank you for bringing it. I mean, I think it, I, I do think there's potential for, you know, some great synergy to get the, you know, get things kind of to the to the end point. What did you call it, throughput? <laughs> to, to put it through, um, you know, so that's, that's awesome. Um, so it's 720 and we try to keep our meetings at at, at 90 minutes if we can. And I want, there's probably not enough time, Angela, to really get a rich conversation going, but I, I do kind of want to turn things over to Angela and, and see what we can do in the next 10 minutes or so and, and see where that puts us, um, if that works for folks. So I, um, I am aware of your time limits and I will be very brief. And I just want to say thank you everyone for your time and your energy on the Cultural Council. It is amazing to see how passionate you all are. And it's also humbling for me to see the scope of your work and all of the things that are on your list of things to do and the plate of things to do. So I have three questions and we don't need to hit them all today. I do want answers to number two, but my three questions are number one, it's great for bodies like this every now and again to do a temperature reading or to take your temperature. So on your upcoming agenda, I'm going to recommend to both um, Julian and to Matt that you talk a little bit about um, your meeting time, the day that you meet, and, um, and make sure that everyone's on board with that. And so the other thing I want you to kind of talk about at a, at a later date is the pace of play or the pace of the meeting and then the structure of the meeting and have a good vibrant discussion about airtime. I feel like um, people feel, I, I've sensed that people feel like they can speak freely in these meetings, but if you are at a point and many groups do this where they need meeting norms, that's something that you should discuss. Mm -hmm. My second question is um, who's gonna stay and who's gonna go? So as I look, and this is part of my job as um, Paul's executive assistant, as I look at your list, I see one, two, three, four, five, six people and kudos to our students who are 18 years of age and younger who have been parts of your group. But like um, Arthur Perro, are you ending your term in June and not seeking reappointment? Hi, um, I will be ending my term in June and not seeking reappointment. Okay. Um, yes. Thank you for your service. And oh, so yeah. I know Leah and Sydney and um, and yes, Andy. are not here. Andy. But um, Jenny Jennifer Lind, are you seeking reappointment in June? No, I'm I'm six years, so I'm okay. I'm officially off. Well, let me say thank you for your service. You're very welcome. It's my pleasure. And Cole, I was here in the office the day you interviewed. It was pre-COVID. I loved meeting you. I hear that you're graduating from Amherst College this spring. Congratulations. So you will be terming off in June as well? Yes, I will have to resign come June. I've heard oh. lovely things about your participation and I enjoy reading everything you write. So keep up the great work. We're all very proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and Julianne, would you like to be reappointed at the end of June? Yes. Okay. All right. So I thank you for answering my questions. Number two and number three is kind of what can we do better? So 
In the town of Amherst, we really recommend a structure of a chair, a vice chair, and a secretary treasurer. Many groups like this group are, are doing rotating secretary duties so that they go through their membership list alphabetically. And if you're absent, then the next time you show up, guess what, it's your turn. So it's just some things to think about hmm. um, as you restructure and as your membership kind of rolls over and we get some fresh faces. Again, let me say thank you for your effort and um, it's nice to be with you this evening. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for being with us. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Angela. And, and also thank you for stepping in as facilitator in addition to um, guest. So we're appreciative of that. Um, okay, so I think, I mean, we covered a lot there and there is a lot of shades of gray with the grantees, but I, I think we're in a good, we're in a good place in terms of um, the dialogue. Uh, unless anybody has an, any other new business that we haven't touched on, I think we should we should adjourn. Next meeting. Next meeting. Thank you. I, <laughs> so, and actually, was that decision made? I mean, are we definitely not going to pencil something in before the um, accessibility roundtable? I personally think it's it's too much. Okay. Any 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 other? Any. So that would be our next meeting then? Yep. At the date? Yeah, but we, you know, I don't actually know that that would be an open, I mean, I'm not even sure that would be a technically an ACC meeting. You know, it's it's an event um, and we probably so I, will have business that needs to be discussed just with the grant cycle where it is, so. Um, I would suggest having a meeting soon after that but not before. We also have, you know, several religious holidays before that. Uh, spring break, you know, there's, it's, it's going to be hard to get a quorum together before that. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we shoot for early May, first week of May. I think that's okay. a good idea. Yeah. So Cindy is only available, I believe it's Tuesday, Wednesdays. I struggle to know when I'm available, so keeping other people's schedules. Um, I think we have enough time to address this in, in email at this point to, to set a date for the first week of May. It's it's a lot. I just want to be, it's, it is a lot to try to do it over email. I'm not going to, you know, um, I mean, could we, could we tentatively say May 3rd, Tuesday, May 3rd? Tuesday would work better for me than Wednesday. Sure. I'm good. Thanks. And in terms of, of meeting a different time than early evening, like uh, like Angela suggested, I mean, I think that's that's probably a longer discussion to have, but I think it's something we should not lose track of. Um, but can we tentatively say Tuesday to the third, and then we can, you know, if it needs to change, it can change. Yes. I don't hear anyone opposing that. No. Nope. Thanks, Cole. Bye. Thanks, everybody. I think we're going to go ahead and adjourn. Thank you. Actually, uh, really quick, um, just if someone yeah. can either email me or remind me of the outcomes that I'm going to be presenting to Charles, um, that would be great. Yeah. I was It'll not in Jenny's notes. notes, right? A lot of that's going to be in Jenny's notes. You know what? I wasn't there. I totally missed the meeting and I don't know what they are. <laughs> so today. Um, today. Oh from today. Oh. Yeah, today yeah. Oh yeah. No, you I'm they'll be done. I'll She's send them out so today. Because I've been writing them the whole time. So Jen, Jenny's really good about getting the notes out within a day or two of the meeting itself. So um yes Joy that's that's a great question. We'll definitely have those i have the email to charles ready i'm just waiting to plug the outcomes in awesome you work fast cool. as well thank you <laughs> pcp uh, does really appreciate it, everybody <laughs> take care thanks, have a good thanks. thanks you guys thanks angela bye bye angela